Thank you, Dr. Solo, for your presentation. On the things flowing from the data you have shared with us, you have adequately analyzed and provided helpful insights. It has helped us realize that the time has come to call every male and female to reflect on, act, and commit further on this crucial topic, women in war Christianity. So to all the male participants of this mythology lectures, mission in today's world has a new force in the global landscape, the face of women from around the world. The valuable information we got from Dr. Zorlo share has global and continental implications worth considering in this year missiology lectures. It shows the urgency in addressing an injustice against humanity. It challenged us male leaders, male theologians, male missionaries, missiologists, and male educators across the global and across faith communities to embrace a responsibility to become allies or co-conspirators for the change and thriving of women's lives. Let us re-educate male leaders concerning the values of every human life. Women are God's image betters. They deserve respect and recognition. But somehow we men have ignored the divine mandate to lead together as male and female agents. We men continue to cling to the patterns of oppression our cultures and ideologies expect. Although God's surprising work through women along the biblical narrative is evident, we still choose to compromise with the patriarchal values and structures of Constantinian and colonial Christianity. The time has come to pay attention and engage in efforts to bring systemic changes in every context without any political agendas or theological compromises that will attempt to what we have heard about women's resiliency, relationality, and tenacity, the virtues of the female soul. So some proposals in response to is one, unmasking the male soul, insecurities. Insecurity allows defense mechanisms to take over. Downplaying becomes a, norm, a normative male response when a cloud of losing control comes over them. Therefore, if a woman is too vocal, it makes men uncomfortable. If women speak their minds, something must be wrong with them. They are unruly and emotional, we think. Thoughts and stares often imply these assumptions as women express their convictions, because we men think we have the final say in everything. Dr. Surlo highlighted the bravery and commitment of women in peacemaking. Remarkable. Women do not hesitate to put their lives on the line. Along these lines, the late Elizabeth Moltmann Vendel shared a powerful story of peasant women in Nicaragua. And I thought about this as I read the present, your presentation. These women discovered themselves in a narrative from scripture on an Easter Sunday. I quote, one Sunday, part of the Easter story was read aloud about how the women came to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. The peasant women got excited and began to identify themselves with these women. It was the women, they said, who went to the tomb first and not the men. Women are braver than men. Others said, women have more heart and love can make you very strong. When you love, you have no fear and can cope with anyone. Jesus who died for love gave them this courage, the courage to love. When you love, you're bold, when you're not even afraid of death. There are no better descriptions than those we heard today from Dr. Surlo. Women are not afraid of death, even when dark forces of oppression rule. This shows an excellent example of self-discovery by a group of simple women in a farming community in Nicaragua. It also illustrates the anomalies of insecure men in defense of distorted man manhood expression. Without limiting now to a cultural context, this snapshot depicts the human condition beyond the distinctions of race, language, economic status, and education. Now, Trivializing the voices of women seems quite accepted today, as in the past, male domination continues to be the norm. However, 
a new type of redeemed man must repress all acts of sexism and misogyny. Another proposal is challenging the downplaying cycle. The examples above that we just heard from Nicaragua reveals an interesting downplaying cycle. A refutation of outspoken women or anything that challenges men's status quo. The normativity of this response has been portrayed throughout history in the treatment of women and their roles in faith communities. Although the peasant women of Nicaragua, in their simplicity, found courage in the resurrection narratives and women's response to loss, men did not support them or celebrated with them in such a moment. On the contrary, they gave them a series of reprimands. Men feel instinctively defensive and unite to tear down any woman's attempt to express themselves. If we were to translate this pattern of behaviors to any context, it may proceed as follows. First, to counter women's self-awareness, males tend to unite and speak against female self-discovery of their significance and presence in any given situation. Second, to reduce the sense of lost control and reinsert the masculine predominance, males seek rational explanations to women's, quote, emotional and meaningless responses. Third, to force a justifiable outcome, males often impose their, quote, divine order of creation for their predominance. In her early observations, Dr. Moltmann Wendel, among the Nicaraguan faith community, she reverted the argument and challenged the core of the masculine predominance. There are three important aspects to this brief episode that we just heard. First, the spontaneous way in which women can rediscover themselves in the Bible. Second, the emotional zealous concern of men that women should not arrive at too much self-awareness. And third, that historical reason had to be produced to stabilize the male rule, confronting the male soul. This is what I propose. Now, as a male, personally, I recognize that others perceive me differently because of my accent or skin color. Although I have a doctoral degree, it is because of my gender that I will have more opportunities to succeed in contrast to women with the same level of education. In today's society, with the technological progress and democratic systems we have, women still face unequal pay, discrimination, and many other ills mentioned in the presentation as well that Dr. Sullo has given us. Reflecting on my experiences now with students in a course here at Fuller Seminary on power and gender topics, I can assert only that confinement to gender roles limits human potential. This limitation puts men and women at a significant loss and disadvantage. For example, women students share a common concern, and I would describe them in unison. Quote, we want freedom, we want inclusion and respect, end of quote. Along these lines, let me share with you a list of statements from women leaders and students from several courses iterations that I gave here at Fuller Seminary. One, I only would like a seat at the table, but the male pastor feel uncomfortable with me because I'm going to seminary. Another said, the pastor has been mentoring new preachers, but all are males. If I only were a male, I would be included. Another said, I was so excited that I was invited to preach, but they asked me because nobody else was available. Although staff at church are supportive of me going to seminary, they said that I could not be ordained. I deserve a title of director and nothing more. Another said, I am the only member on staff with a graduate degree. What I do is to check the male preacher's notes. Another said, to make sure that they are biblically sound, even though they're not educated enough, but they are hired. And I can go on and on. So if we think about what we have just heard here in North America, and with the technology that we have, with the progress we have, we can say and correlate this very well with Dr. Sorlo's uh, argument that there's still 
oppression, limitations, exclusion to women across the globe. And we have not done well in improving, in changing, in bringing systemic transformation to our places of work, service, ministering, etc. I remember in the seventh week during the course that I gave on power and gender, I, re I read the statements like this all the time. With a heavy heart and a saddened heart, I shared this with my wife, Jeannie. She listened carefully and she felt the burden and my frustration. And she said to me, you must write about this. You must share this with others because others need to hear this. So with deep conviction, I intend to do this with assurance of the Lord's confirmation and what I read in Dr. Solo. My final words to the women participating in this missiology lectures and those watching online is that we males need your strength, my sisters. We repent for setting you aside and thinking you are to take from our power and control. We men want you to be partners in the mission of God. We men cannot do it alone because you are gifted to lead. You're not a mere token. You deserve to have a seat at the table and be assured that your voices are valuable to join mission, the mission that we need to go do together. After many years of research now and contemplation regarding the issue of women in leadership, I realized that regardless of my position concerning women leaders, Others will disagree. However, I would rather risk everything so that I may see women developing to their full potential and walking in freedom. Now, as I look deep into my soul, I remove my mask. I surrender the power and barriers that have limited my sisters from flourishing and thriving as powerful counterparts for the work of God's rule. So be it, Lord. Thank you, Dr. Shurlo, for calling us to be reminded once again that God is at work. And I praise God for your research, your study, and your contribution to this 22 Missiology Lectures at Fuller Seminary. Thank you so much. <music>